Hello, welcome to the Radiant Tug of War event. My name is Nomad, I am joined by Mo Farah. How's it going, man? It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's going really well. I'm having a good time. Played like my, my you know, daily 20 games of chess yesterday. I had a really good time. I'm looking to see, you know, forward to seeing who gets some elf synergy this game. Get some goblin mechs uh, going. I'm really looking forward to it. Sorry, when was the last time you played an actual game of Dota? Ten seconds. Uh, like, like three weeks ago, maybe. All right, get the fuck, get get out of here, get out. I'm getting a proper analyst in this in this call. What? All right, he's gone. Sorry about that, everybody, but this is the Radiant Dota Clash. My name is Noma, and joining me today is actually Tsunami. How's it going, man? What's up? Let's, uh, let's, let's watch some Apex Legends, right? So uh, <laughs> no. I'm thinking dropping Skull I'm Town. Out of analysts, uh, uh, I'm running out of analysts I, real uh, quick. Yeah, it's a, it's a best of seven. The first best of seven in years for Dota 2. A, a truly historic event. Team Empire versus NIP carrying on the torch of... I, I believe there was one after the famous DK one, uh, where I think IG ended up winning it, but it wasn't as as much of a seminal event as the famous lunch break where DK came back and 4 0'd after being down three games in a best of seven. Will such a similar thing happen here? It's tough to say. Uh, NIP versus Team Empire, remaining. not necessarily as high tier as those two teams were at that LAN event, but still an event nonetheless. So, I mean, these teams, it's, it, it's, it's kind of an odd format, this one. We've had kind of East versus West has been the idea of this, right? So we've got Team Empire beating up the likes of uh, Gambit, who were definitely the favorites for uh, their side of the bracket. Uh, and Na'Vi as well, though they didn't directly beat Na'Vi, because I believe Namiga beat Na'Vi, or was it the other way around? No, I think Namiga Empire eventually beat Gambit, and Empire yeah, beat Na'Vi. Yeah, Empire beat Na'Vi. Yeah. yeah, and then Empire beat Namiga. And now here they are versus NIP in a best of seven super final is what they're calling it. Isn't that hype? Uh, meanwhile, NIP, they uh, they didn't actually have to go through OG. OG got beaten by uh, Singularity, and then NIP beat Singularity, and... Uh, here they are now in this grand final match. Sorry, super final match. I'm using the wrong words already. Um, of course, you do have those betting odds on your screen by 1xbet. If you are interested in placing down a bet, then you can head over to their website details in the stream and social media, and you'll get a 130 euro Ten bonus, uh, or dollar bonus, I think. I don't know, whatever, whatever currency you're using, it's there. Uh, <laughs> you get that for uh, placing any kind of bet on the Radiant um, tournament events, which, of course, is this last game only. And here are your odds on the screen now, so if you fancy throwing in your odds with one of these teams, do so now. But we have quite the draft in our hand. We're quite the way through this one. We did have some delays starting up. I apologize for that, but we are into the match now. And uh, we have a Phantom Assassin being picked up in the first phase by Empire, taking it back a little bit. Meanwhile, NIP chose to go for the Lifestealer. Yeah, in the Nami game that I had casted yesterday where Empire came out on top, I uh, Tiny and Phantom Assassin... Well, Phantom Assassin was the girl of the match. Both Namiga and Empire were... Uh, re regularly gravitating towards her. I think Namiga picked her up one time with a Magnus first phase, but Empire showed a lot of flexibility, being able to pair her with a lot of different heroes. And they also very consistently went for Seiyu's Tiny. Uh, they would usually do some sort of dual offlane type thing, but it was almost a, a roaming type Tiny that would visit mid and alternate between the offlane. And I, I saw a lot of success with it, and I am... I have the utmost, utmost confidence that PPD saw that much tiny and was not afraid of it, which is why he chose not to ban it, instead opting to ban out the Pango, Tide, and Viper in the first phase. Yeah, the Pangolier ban is a little bit interesting as well, and the same as the Tide, actually. Two first phase bans which you don't really see, but, you know, that's just PPD doing his homework, Galaxy braining things out a little bit, finding the comfort picks and getting them out and just saying, yep, take your tiny, we are ready for it. Now, uh, first phase Shaman is pretty common for NIP, actually. If you joined in for the uh, best of five yesterday, then I believe we had four out of five games with a Shadow Shaman in it. So this is clearly a hero which NIP think is pretty damn strong right now. Uh, meanwhile, they'll also take up the Lich as well, who hasn't had quite as much success as some of his counterpart supports recently, but um, still pretty strong in the right situations, especially if you throw on a Doom on top of that as well. I mean, Doom, Lifestealer, they're pretty tanky guys, but they don't have... Well, I know Lifestealer doesn't have much armor, I'm not too sure about Doom. Uh, but of course, if you then throw the Frost Shield on top, then it doesn't even matter, because that physical damage um, reduction gonna help out a lot. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, I'm just happy that PVD is going for Lich as opposed to Sven. Uh, I know at Katowice, 
he, among other teams, were, were attem attempting to make Sven be relevant after the 7.21b nerfs. Uh, even before the nerfs, I was very skeptical, and a lot of teams were picking it up first phase. But if you need some sort of physical damage mitigation, I find Lich's Frost Shield to be far more, you know, it's, it's a much lower investment of a hero, because Lich can still be very useful without any sort of physical damage Ten being seconds. present. Ten being seconds. a response pick to Phantom Assassin makes it especially good, but overall, seconds, with Sinister Gaze seconds. and just strong laning in general as being a ranged hero with a you know relatively low cooldown nuke, I find Lich to be just more reliable overall than Sven. And pairing it with a Shaman allows this Shaman to get a lot more farm. I think during MDL and Katowice, the most successful Shamans we were seeing were the ones who would get a relatively early Aether Lens and then that's really all they needed. The long-range shackles and hexes were proving to be so irritating for so many enemy carries to deal with, and Phantom Assassin on Team Empire is going to be no exception to that. Alright, so moving into this final phase of bans, we have the Razor and the OD thrown out the uh, window. Any predictions for Empire coming into this, then? I... <laughs> NIP is so unpredictable <laughs> that oftentimes, like, I coming into it just based off of their presence at Katowice, I would probably give them the edge, seeing as how Empire haven't really been to any lands recently, whereas NIP have been showing up. But NIP, I don't know. Like I think I think sometimes they 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 burn out, and I have no justification for that. In a long series, I would be more willing to lean towards a team with more competitive experience like NIP. So right. given the context of a best of seven as opposed to a best of one or a best of three. I am leaning towards NIP, but Empire impressed me. Like, seconds, after Namiga beat remaining. Gambit, I was like, oh, okay, well, clearly Namiga are going Five to be seconds, the favorites in this seconds, Eastern remaining. final. And then they just got completely obliterated by Empire. And so I was surprised that Empire showed up so well because they actually lost to the Pango in the first phase of this tournament, but then the Pango weren't able to. Oh, no. You know, they, they, they had like selection. scheduling conflicts or something like that. Yeah. So Empire ended up moving forward and then 2 0 Navi. And so technically they shouldn't even be here, but <laughs> they took advantage of the situation and they're now here in the super final. And I think that's, you know, it's uh, understandable because they did well against Amiga and they did very well against Navi. So all they needed was a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting wondering what would happen if uh, they had to swap places with the panga would they be here now instead no way to know but uh, all we do know is that we've got these two teams clashing up against each other in this best of seven the draft is over and uh, well do you have any predictions for who's going to take this game one because uh, we haven't really looked too heavily into this draft but one thing i do know is that the 33 doom is a force to be reckoned with especially when you've kind of got this uh one main core lineup. I mean, I know Monkey King can do a lot, but really it is going to be Dream on the Phantom Assassin who's the one headlining this Team Empire act. And if that person gets doomed, you could be in some real trouble. And she's not a hero which wants to really be building these Lincoln Spheres and stuff. So she has to completely adjust her style of play to actually get a victory in this game and be effective as a Phantom Assassin. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. And I think just for that reason, my money's going to be on Ninjas and Pajamas. They've also got Fatter on the Pugner at mid as well, which is pretty scary and it's going to mean which, that the uh, Monkey King probably isn't going to be as effective as he perhaps like to be. He does like to be this uh, dominating hero. Yeah, Monkey King's not going to be as effective in lane and Winter Wyvern's not going to be as effective as and a mid-game support. Cold Embrace is pretty much just going to prime people up to get life drained for a good while of time. At the minimum, I suppose Ace is going to have a fairly tough time on this life stealer. You know, he's having to deal with the cold embrace for the Wyvern, all the armor from Monkey King and Wukong's command, and obviously just being kited around by a Phantom Assassin and whatnot. So I hopefully I, I think the X Factor for Empire is gonna be Maiden's Bounty Hunter. It's it's always very risky to you know pick up a bounty hunter whenever you don't really have the best late game because you're kind of depending on the fact that okay track is going to get me a bunch of kills and you know my phantom assassin and monkey King are going to get early bkbs and so then pugna is not going to be as big of a factor but if maiden doesn't find a lot of track kills then these physical damage support i mean physical damage cores are going to struggle against the magic damage of fada yeah, yeah, I think so. It's, it's also very interesting that um, NIP decided to go back for this uh, Shadow Shaman because in the best of five they played versus Singularity, but when they got to game five, they actually subbed out Saxa for Milan. 
Milan played in Elder Titan and they did so much better than they've been doing previously in that series. Like it was it was just a stomp the final game and the rest of them are really close. Um they have taken Saxa back obviously because he's the team member and they've they've gone back for the Shaman which which surprises me a bit, but this is obviously something which NIP think are super duper strong uh, in this series. As uh Doom trying to back himself away. No real blood gonna be spilt here, just a bit of a tussling for the runes and uh it's going to be even. Two for NIP, two for Empire, and uh, it's going to start things off straight down the middle. So, as I said before, it's going to be interesting watching how these lanes play out. Um, we kind of have our predictions already set. You know, I, we don't think this Monk King is going to have a fantastic time in the middle lane. Uh, what about this top lane of PPD and 33 on the Lich and Doom? And uh, they're going to be up as well. It looks like a tri lane right now, but I imagine Sayu might rotate bottom a little bit later on. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I take what I yeah, a bounty hunter is not going to be able to <laughs> just take the slam. I mean, Maiden's going to cut creep waves whenever available, but for the time being, I I think Seiyu typically tries to find toss plays. Uh, Doom is fairly susceptible early on since, you know, either you have the Devour or the Scorched Earth, so either you have the move seed or the HP region. You can't have both at level one. But uh, if they're not able to find kills early on, then yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if either the Wyvern or the Tiny rotate to the bot lane. Because you really should not give a Shaman free experience. You need him to be supporting someone because a, a level 6 Shaman is always a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. It's, uh, like so, it lays down some harass. Even chasing a bounty under tower, in fact. Uh, just doesn't, doesn't care about the armor as uh, 33 eats up some creeps. And, uh, yeah, I mean, things off to a pretty pretty normal start as uh, Fata Throws down the Decrepify in the mid lanes. Black Archangel going for the pull at top as well. But um, we always talk about storylines when we're talking about best of fives, right? Like best of fives tend to be these long, drawn out games where you kind of have their own meta starting to come up and, uh, and be evaluated. This is the best of seven, so this is going to be like amplified even more so. Or you reckon things are just going to get crazy towards the end if it gets that far as people's brains start to turn to mush. Yeah, which is why you said the idea of an Elder Titan, like, I wouldn't be surprised if that shows up later on, just because these are heroes that have proven success. I think Shaman is also proven successful just in the meta in general, perhaps not for NIP uh, throughout this tournament, but overall I think the hero has been very good as 33 on the top lane taking a little bit of abuse. Yeah, he's, uh, that Frost Shield helping out a lot from the Harass here as the uh, Spin Blast doesn't land on him, but with the Avalanche, might be enough to bring him down, tossing forward to the Phantom Assassin as well, gonna clear out those trees, revealing 33, a couple more right clicks, the Dagger will finish the job, Dream gets the kill, and uh, that'll be 33 dying in the top lane, not what we're used to seeing to be honest, but uh, I'll be very happy with that, with that tri lane on the side of Empire finally starting things off in the right way. Tips coming out for Madden in the bottom lane as well, as he's, uh, he's trying to solo lane this bounty hunt, he, he's, he's really doing it. The absolute madman. I am. I, I think Lifestealer is something obviously more than happy with this, and I'm pretty sure Shaman is as well. I, I'm surprised that Empire are putting such a heavy focus on the top line. I mean, it's going to work mainly because, like I said, Frost Shield is primarily used as physical damage mitigation, and between Splinter Blast and Avalanche Toss, there's a little bit too much magic damage to really, you know, get prevented. Yeah, meanwhile, Madden just uh, being chased around the jungle by Saxa here. Super annoying for this uh, for this bounty hunter, but I don't know. Th this seems like a super weird trial lane, you know? We're, we're used to seeing um, heroes like Underlord sometimes. You know, if you ever have to run a trial lane and put someone do it on, on their own, usually we see heroes like this uh, Underlord. Not, not a squishy, well, I guess bounty's not that squishy, but... Yeah. Comparatively speaking, squishy hero like the bounty was actually gonna just die under tower there. Squishy and doesn't really necessarily like he's gonna have to give up the lane at some point, and then who's gonna take it over? Because he's gonna have such a it's an entire lane's worth of experience that he's getting, which is great because he's gonna hit level six, you know, relatively early, assuming he does a good job continuing to contest polls and whatnot. But then what happens when he needs to go to Rome? After that, no one can really take over the lane. Yeah, suddenly as uh, Problematic's got a bit of a fight over, 
breaking out in the top lane here. Dream coming forwards. Really wants to find the damage onto PPD and the dagger. And now with that frost shield running out as well, they might be able to find the damage. Split to blast and a toss will finish the job. PPD goes down. Sayu gets that kill. So another kill up here in the top lane for Empire. Gonna be happy with how this one's starting out for them. But still, the gold advantage in NIP's favor just because of the way Empire are running this lane. You know, they need to be getting these kills. It's not like it's a bonus to the to these lanes that they're getting kills. There's something which has to happen as Madden starts to uh, chunk away at Saxa here. Yeah, this is how he plans to farm. He's just gonna steal his gold with Janada. Radiant <laughs> Neat creeps. But will he get the bounty runes is the real question. <laughs> Not interested in the slightest. He's gonna run run away from those. Was he a bounty hunter? Not going for bounty runes. Does he even know his name? I know, right? So, I, I mean, like you said, this is entirely necessary for the tri lane, but Doom is not a hero that is all too upset about it. He's a hero who can, you know, pick up some gold in the jungle very easily. Lich is just your standard lane support. He can soak up experience elsewhere. So, uh, I, at some point, I do hope that Tiny rotates mid. I mean, he placed a ward just now, smoked up. I guess maybe the lane was pushed up too high and so you didn't want to waste that much time. So Lich in some trouble. PPD is going to drop. A kill for Sayu. Once again, this tiny getting to work here. There's a reason Empire like this hero so much, and uh, we're seeing why. But Lifesteal has picked up a Midas at 5 minutes 47. That is the quickest Midas I've seen this patch for sure. I'm pretty sure he was going to go for it regardless, but the fact that he has a free lane, <laughs> I mean, he has free CS, he has denies out the wazoo, does not surprise me in the slightest. I am curious what his build is going to be afterwards, though. Because, I mean, if he wants to go really greedy, he could go Radiance on top of a Midas. But I, I think that he may need to be present a little bit earlier on. Well, the betting odds here from 1x bet certainly favoring the side of NIP still for this series. Don't forget, these are the odds for the entire series. But of course, if you do like what you see or fancy putting some money down, you can head over to their website details. Pretty much all around you. In the chat, in the uh, stream, on social media, all over the place. As a dream. And 33 just fighting up at top side, kind of, kind of just hanging around, around the side, constantly being a threat here on the top lane and unable, uh, well, not letting NIP have a peaceful lane up here in the top. Or NIP are just keeping the, this tri lane busy. I, I'm fairly sure that they're confident that Lifestealer is going to be able to out carry whatever this Phantom Assassin is capable of. And in the mid lane, Pugna, actually, uh, Monkey King is holding his own surprisingly well. I mean, yep. Pugna obviously has more denies, but all things considered, this Monkey King is not really, you know, Dyer's middle tower losing the lane all too dramatically. Yeah, things are going things are going okay, to be honest. Um, better than we expected, but it still comes down to the fact that it doesn't, you know, okay, he's having a decent lane, but is he going to have a decent mid game? You know, Monkey Kings, they need to find this momentum, and Pugna is a great hero at stopping that from happening as he <laughs> gets a cheeky deny with a Degrepify there. I think Monkey King can afford to go a little bit more farm intensive this game. He doesn't necessarily need to. Oh, Madden you know, in some trouble in the bottom lane. It's going to drop here to Ace and Madden. And uh, now a kill added into the Lifestealer's pocket. This guy's getting huge. I had uh, seen in the previous series, I mean, I had mentioned in the previous series that oftentimes a lot of teams like to play OG top style as top lane. Okay, here, getting nuked down. No, he is not. He is actually going to die, so NIP finding the kill, but PPD goes down in response fairly quickly. And uh, Dream just backs themselves away. They don't want to go into 33 here. Meanwhile, Fata will get himself. Ooh, an arcane rune. Lovely. Delicious stuff for a puppet to pick up. So, the, the way that Thompson oftentimes plays Monkey King is that he's like constantly hopping around in the trees, making as much space as possible. But you can get away with being more greedy and farming most of the time as in mid lane. Oh, in comes Sayu here with the Avatos combo onto Saxa, and he's not gonna last two seconds as he does dodge out that Nether Blast. That's cool, you know. Monkey King's got a phase shift now. <laughs> it's really awesome. That's why every game I'm reminded that I get a little bit sour inside. Every, like in my mind, I'm like, oh, it has the same blink dagger rules as you know Tree Dance or something like that. So you can't use it for three seconds if you just got damaged. But no, he can use it whenever he wants. It is quite literally like phase shift. <laughs> Madness. Oh, I thought I was gonna stack himself a camp and reap the warp. Never mind, he failed. <laughs> oh, actually, I think that might have been the tiny just dropping in yeah, and uh, the tiny ruining his day. What a mean guy. So I don't, I don't know what Ace's uh, game plan is gonna be. He's still just sitting on Midas phase boots. It's possible that he's just gonna wait and see 
how much pressure Empire start applying. If they start pushing very heavily and Fada's not able to withstand it with just Nether Blast, then it's possible we may see an earlier armlet or something like that. But if Maiden is just going to sit here in the bot lane constantly as a bounty hunter, not really rotate anytime soon, then I'm sure Ace is more than willing to go tete-a-tete -tete with the farm. Yeah, I mean... It's 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 not looking too pretty for the bounty hunter down here to be honest. Eleven and one right now, and uh, not particularly. How many levels has he got actually? Yeah, level four right now compared to the uh, Lycia's level eight. So and another set of bounty runes for Radiant, at least in the bot lane. But oh, uh, this Wyvern could be in some trouble as uh, thirty-three and Fatter chasing him down. Cold Embrace not going to save you from the, that magic damage as uh, Dream throws a dagger and runs himself away. Meanwhile, Madden in some trouble once again, and uh, the Bounty Hunter will drop in the bottom lane as well. So, uh, two kills across the map for NIP. Empire's dying to lose out here, and uh, with 2k gold behind as well, not feeling too good about that one, as we have a little bit of stuttering going on in the stream. Oh good, maybe, maybe you'll sink back with me then. <laughs> <laughs> we behind a bit. Uh... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, looks like we're sorted out now. We can always jump back to the YouTube stream if needed, but it looks like things are getting smooth. Meanwhile, Sayu in a bit of trouble here. Life Drain coming in. Oh, the Avatar's going to buy him a little bit of time. PPD, though, still chasing. Putting that Frost Shield on himself. Wants to run him down the old fashioned way. But Sayu, nice juke in the trees there. Did he get spotted? I don't think he did. And actually, Empire rotating some heroes into this one. They might be willing to fight this. Is 33 getting slowed up? Can they find the kill, though? Doesn't really look like it because Empire just aren't chasing that hard. Fadder is here and he he is scary. Yeah, he's more than willing to fight. He's level 9 at this point, so I don't really think even a full 5-on-5 five -five team fight he's concerned. Monkey King definitely can't rotate. He needs to take advantage of all this amount of time that he can free farm in the mid lane. He has gone for a Midas on the Monkey King, so Kodos, like I said, uh, so oftentimes I think Monkey Kings are better off being greedier. Back on the oh line. dear, yep, the Wyvern does get dropped. <laughs> Happening time and time again as NIP started off giving a couple of kills to this top lane, but now turning things around as they are finding blood all across the map, and Empire actually fallen behind on the kills despite running this tiny in the aggressive tri lane, so. And I don't really think there's a good recovery plan. I mean, at best, it is this Monkey King Midas, but Phantom Assassin is going to struggle. She's still trying to complete off her Battle Fury but she's not participating in any track kills. She's just barely level seven. I mean, she's about to hit level eight and that's it for her. And if she goes to this bot lane, like Ace is not even concerned about her. No, like she's just critting him and he's like, yep, yeah, all right, cool. Uh, I'm just gonna get this last hit, no, no biggie. Dagger crit, yeah, that's all right. I'm just gonna sneak in and grab a couple more. Being on the mid lane. So having to throw out the avalanche defensively there to stop Saxo getting that shackle onto him there. Otherwise he would have been dead. And the push continues. Soxa is not level 6 yet, so no Serpent Ward potential, but just uh, the Pugna Nether Blast, and eventually the Aether Lens. Right now, Fada ended up opting to get the Rod of Atos as his first item, but once he gets Aether Lens on top of that, then it's a very low risk push, as it looks like on the fight. M3 is taking a little bit of damage here, but not enough as well. Oh my god, Maiden just gets destroyed by Saxa. Too much magic damage coming in with the Decrepify Aethershock and the uh, Nether Blast as well. Far too much room for the vibes, so Bounty Hunter not really getting a whole lot done around this map right now. He's actually fallen below Sayu in net worth, in fact nearly 1k gold behind the Tiny. Maybe this was a plan all along though. I... I don't think so, though. I... I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't just pick a more traditional offlaner. Yeah. Because I don't really think that there were all that many banned out. And all you really need is one hero down there to join Bounty Hunter. So they went for a defensive tri lane. Uh, they got a handful of kills, but I mean, Doom didn't really get shut down all too much. Lich didn't fall behind all that too much. And Lifestealer is not like it was. It was two heroes and bot for NIP. And this Lifestealer is way outpacing the farm of a Phantom Assassin who was in a tri lane. So, I mean, I mean, CS is similar, but like the denies and the experience differential is substantial. Phantom Assassin is level nine, and Lifestealer with his Midas is about to hit level twelve. Ooh. 
yeah, this uh, XP is starting to pay off big time for Aetherius. He's just been... I mean, of all the players you want to leave alone as well, Ace is not one of them as Maiden. He's just comes into contact with Fado. I mean, the Shuriken will cancel off the life drain, but he's got a haste drain, so Fado's just going to keep on chasing here and finds himself that kill. No problems at all. This Pugno is just becoming a menace, stalking around the map and finding kill after kill. And as a result of Fada making all this space, Ace is going to go for the greedier build, so he does have a Radiance queued up right now, and about to have the money for a Relic at just almost 15 minutes. That is scary. That is, uh, very, very scary, as, uh, you know, the Slice here just catapulting forwards in farm, and, uh, no real attempt from Empire to stop it either. Although, I say that, they're jumping on him here, but there's just nothing they can do, and, you know, Lifestealer just gets... Alright, they're tossing him back. They've got like five heroes here. Surely they can bring down Ace. He pops out the rage, but in comes a Chain Frost as well. Like Alex Angel, it throws down the curse to try and keep Ace still. The Avalanche as well. They really want to find this killer. Finally, he does go down. They're also going to take down PPD as well. So getting two kills here for the price of one as Ace finally does drop. Alright, Empire. They find the rotations. They finally punish Ace for being greedy here. You know, he, he did work. He did roam out a little bit too far. A bit of an overextension perhaps. And does pay the price. Yeah, if anything, it should have been the Lich trying to go for that bounty rune, and Lifestealer goes for the safer bounty rune on his side of the map. I mean, clearly he thought he was strong enough that there wouldn't be five Empire heroes showing up to contest it, but, I mean, it's Midas is off cooldown, that battle was feels bad. He didn't even get to buy his relic in the secret shop, so he lost a little bit of gold there. But the rest of his team is taking advantage of the space, now top lane is getting pushed out as a result. Yep, throw down those snakes, get yourself a tower. It's uh, pretty straightforward for uh, an IP here. Uh, so they're only moving in the Wyvern to try and defend this one. He's too scared to come forward, so we're anything we want to say. Moving rest onto PPD. The top lane, nope. The tower will go down. A couple of Nether Blasts, a couple of Snakes, and the tower is toast. MIP feeling very good about this first game so far. They're only at a 2k gold advantage, but this Life Stealer is uh, looking pretty chunky. And NIP don't even need to push this fast. I mean, it's it's great that they are because they're getting so much map control. They're placing a lot of wards in the northern jungle. So it's going to make the map even smaller for this bounty hunter who has... I don't think he's found a single track kill yet. But even if NIP want to slow it down and take it to late game, Ace and Fada are more than capable of doing so. And the Doom as well. Like, the Doom has gone for more of a, you know, team fight pushing kind of build. He's got a drum and a Vlad's. But he can go greedier if he wants to. He can you know, go for that Devourer bonus gold, take it easy. But whatever the case, I don't really know what Empire's best play is other than a godlike Winner's Curse where Lifestealer manages to kill your Pugna, but that's like an <laughs> ideal scenario. It's a big ask. We'll, uh, we'll see if they can pull that off, but yeah, I mean... Looking at the Crab Fire as well, you know, they've, they, they've got the Tiny, but other than that, they don't really have a whole lot to actually like burst through Pugna if he does decide to Crab Fire himself, so it's almost like an really easy defensive spell to throw out this game as well. Uh, as I look at some of these items coming in. Monkey King has gone for the Midas himself and has the Diffusal Blade also, so he's pretty well farmed in this mid lane, to be honest. Um, well ahead of the Pugna, to be honest. And a slight invasion by Dire, but PPD dodges it narrowly. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, he might just run back in here, not too sure. He's Dyer's being pinged out a little bit by Maiden here. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, the push continues by NIP as uh, they're looking now for a tier 1 tower in the bottom lane. And uh, they'll do so with a ton of Nether Blasts being thrown down. Wyvern coming forwards. Empire are rotating in for this, so the only one who's not here is a Phantom Assassin who is uh, farming up the jungle, uh, as is the Life Studio as well. So it's a 4 on 4 engagement, it's looking like it's going to break out here in the bottom lane. If NIP want this tower, they will have to fight Empire for it. Will they though? This Aether Lens Nether Blast. Yeah. Like I said, it's so <laughs> low commitment. And they have Serpent Wards as well, so I think Sox is keeping that in his back pocket if they really need to. Or they can just take a fight. Oh, in comes the Atos onto the Tiny here, but Immediate Winter's Curse comes out on to Saxa here, trying to lock him down. Uh, the shield comes out from PPD to help him out. Meanwhile, Snake's dropped under tower. No one dying just yet. Saxa getting incredibly low, though. Monkey really wants to come in and finish this one up, but can't really find the entry. Meanwhile, the tower has dropped, and NIP might just get themselves out. The Fadda's still just hanging around these wards saying, yeah, guys, come at me, jump me, see what happens. Well, Maiden's about oh, to find out Maiden. what happens. Yep, he came a little bit too far forwards and Fada got him good. That eight is coming out and uh, yeah, a little, a little bit of an overextension there from the bounty. 
You know, even beyond like the lack of track kills, Bounty Hunter opted to max out Janata. I don't even know how much he's right clicking people to steal gold. So he's, his Shadow Walk is one point, and his Shuriken Toss is one point, so he isn't in this. He, he can't even like be that much of a mobile ward for his team right now. So Bounty Hunter pick is just so peculiar. Like, yeah. I, I guess the hero itself is fine, but the way they laned it and the team around it are just not conducive to making this hero look good. You know, 36 gold stolen every time he hits someone, you know, if you, if you think about it, it's like, what, 17? If he ever hits someone. <laughs> I mean, he might die every time he does it, but he still <laughs> right. creates like a, what, 70... How much gold deficit? 72. 72, thank you. Die. Scanning. And IP. Think better of contesting the rune this time. We'll see after Ace kind of got slapped on the hand for the 15 minute rune. Yep, they've learned their lesson, that's for sure, as uh, IP will be able to grab themselves two bounties and Empire also grab themselves two. Everything nice and even here. As NIP though, then they look like they're going for another tower at bottom, not too sure. They're kind of hanging around here. Um, they've got this Radiance now on the Life Stealer, and honestly, it might just be go time. Oh, Atos comes out on to... Who is this up here? I can't see. It's a tiny. It's tiny. Ace closing the distance onto Sayu as well. Chasing him around the tree and chomping him out the tiny. Made short work off by Fighter and Ace. That's the thing. Empire, they, they just like getting a little bit too close here, don't they? They, they like kind of... <laughs> sticking their... Like, hey, can, can, I, I mean, can I come into this lane? It's Aetherland, Aetherland's Rod. It's like... 1300 range, I believe, because I think the default range is 1150. So Dyer's it's 1300, basically blink dagger target range, target except you don't actually need to go in. You just toss a projectile. If you catch someone, great. Dyer's yeah. You do not want to be on the receiving end of Fatter's Rod this game, that's for sure. It's the snake's drops to take this tower with the catapult as well. Empire setting up on the high ground, maybe. I mean. PA is actually more farm than the life stealer right now. I mean, he's got the Midas, but still, she's she's farmed pretty well. And the Monkey King, he's doing pretty right as well. So there could there's still, there's still plenty in this game. You know, only a 3k gold advantage, um, despite the towers they've gotten as well. It, it's quite good that Empire is staying in with these kind of farming they're doing. It kind of just counts this thing though, where at some point they're gonna have to take a fight here into NIP. And even if they do get, like, even if they get a gold advantage, I'm still not sure how that's going to work out for them, especially with this Doom and this Pugna doing so much work. I mean, I think we need to be looking at BKBs here, to be honest. Radiant's yeah, exactly. The bare minimum requirement for Phantom attack. Assassin to start helping her team is a BKB. Otherwise, she can't join a fight. Pugna will just make her useless between Decrepify and Life Drain. But talking about so... she's got the Battle Fury Yasha, and she's got the BKB, like, pretty damn soon, like 100 gold away right now. Um, yeah. Yep, there you go, purchases it up, but Fado actually comes into contact with Sayu here. Black Ox Angel coming in from behind though, gonna use the Arctic Burn to get up to the trees. We'll have the interrupt available onto Fada. And now Dream jumping in, but immediately gets doomed up on the Phantom Assassin. Have to back ourselves away. Meanwhile, Ace coming to the back lines, ripping apart Sayu, and down goes Dream as well to the Chain Frost and Fada and Black Ox Angel tidied up as well. NIP find three and looking for more as well as Maiden comes too close to the beast, trying to limp himself away, but NIP just chasing him down here. And uh, they can't see him, but it doesn't matter. They'll kill him all, all the same. And then there's going to be four kills by NIP here. So again, you know, really questionable for Empire to actually jump that one. I assume the idea was like, well, you know, I'm a Phantom Assassin. The Courier's on its way to me. I can jump in and, and get that BKB off before anything starts to go wrong. Um, I'm sure that was the idea, but all things considered, she got doomed right off the bat. So even if she does activate BKB, I don't really know how useful she is in any given fight. At least she'll be able to connect some right clicks, so you know she's not going to be missing from the Radiance. And I, uh, he, I mean, I'm sure she would have gotten decrepified at some point, or her target would have gotten decrepified. So it's really tough to say how useful she would have been. I think Empire, like they have no real initiation. Winter's uh, Winter's Curse was used just to cancel. Uh, I, I think it was the life trend, and as a result, they don't have their one team fight win, which, as I said, like Pugna and Life Stealer both need to be locked in the same winner's curse. I, ideally, like I said, it's Life Stealer attacking someone else, but that's a lot easier said than done. And so, even if Phantom Assassin does drop in with a BKB, like I don't know, this Monkey King with a Midas, he's not going to be able to do anything because he doesn't have a BKB, and some target is going to get defensively decrepified. So. I, don't, I think Empire are just a little bit too far behind at this point. Yeah, it's definitely an uphill battle for them. They're going to need to find some pretty 
crazy momentum in order to come back into this game, which is NIB just have so much with this Doom just sitting on the high ground. Look at him with all of the flame. Up here. So immediately jumping in though, trying to blow up Saxa, nearly gets a kill, but not quite. The snakes come down and Zayu will pay the price for his aggressive movement. So nearly paid off, and that's exactly the kind of play you need to go for there, but unfortunately, doesn't kill the Shaman. Shaman gets those wards down, and I uh, think it's looking very sad for Empire, though they will be able to clean off these wards. It doesn't look like NIP are committing for the full barracks. They just wanted that tower and maybe look for some shrines now as well. Yeah, shrines, Roche, they could take their time. Yeah, I, I, it would have been a nice play if Seiyu was able to get it followed up with, like, a Splinter Blast or a Boundless Strike or something like that, but he was pretty much the only person going in on his team, so does not successfully kill off the Shadow Shaman. And, uh, NIP actually don't immediately pivot into the Rush Pit, and I think Empire are kind of expecting them to do so. Empire have some vision nearby, but it may not be enough. But I, I, I if they don't contest it, then it's just going to go from bad to worse. And, you know, they have a really fairly good team against contesting it. You know, you've got Tree Dance Vision, you've got Winner's Curse in the Pit, Avalanche Toss. It's a pretty easy solution to be able to contest a fight if you can find the right initiation at least. Well, there's, there's gonna be an Avatos coming out, but a quick hey, run away from uh, Sayos who picks up a haste screen there and uh, looking himself out of danger. Being on the BKB pop from Dream, but he can't find a target right now. Jumps up, finds BPD at least, and now the Wukong's coming out. Fada's in trouble as well. Ace trying to run himself away from this one, but Empire's starting to do a very good fight, and now Ace in trouble. Does pop that Rage to get himself out. BKBs have now run out. Is there an opening for NIP? I don't think so. They're missing two heroes. It's Sayu tossing back the Doom. 33 in trouble. He's carrying a very important package. It's down goes 33. Ace trying to run himself away. Actually trying to come in for the quick ones of Maiden. We'll get that one. Meanwhile, Black Arx Angel looking for the plus one, and Saxa here. Saxa trying to run to the trees. Black Arx Angel chasing go for the TP out, but not going to make it. Boundless Strike comes through, and they will finish the job eventually. Zaxa does drop, and that is going to be a full team wipe for Team Empire here. This is a big shift in momentum. That's what we were talking about. I wasn't expecting this to come out from them, but they just annihilate the side of NIP. Dude, and the dream happened. It was a really, really good toss by Seiyu. He was getting just pawed away by the Lifestealer in the river, but the Winner's Curse came out on Pugna, and then Seiyu tossed the Lifestealer into that Winner's Curse, and so Lifestealer just started shredding his Pugna, and that's exactly what needed to happen. Really well executed by Team Empire. I, I definitely think that Lifestealer is going to be a little bit more cognizant of his positioning in the future, because, I mean, this is a great way to force the combination. They don't necessarily need to catch Lifestealer and Pugna in close quarters. You can just toss one of them into the other, so... Once these two cores were eliminated, the rest of NIP were just outmatched. Especially with these fresh BKBs completed. Like I said, it was the 10 second BKB from the Monkey King and from the Phantom Assassin. Alright, so... Well... Yeah, those BKBs, we talked about it before as well, you know, they, those will make the difference. And the timings came in so clutch for Empire coming out at the exact same time there and then finding, as you say, the dream initiation onto NIP here. Can they find further success though? Is this game very even right now? And uh, maybe NIP not looking quite as good as they once were as Empire just charging up onto the high ground here. Quick smoke out from NIP to try and find their way around this fight as Ward's being thrown down. Koda's jumping around in the trees here. Sure, what to go on is both teams kind of nervously skirting around one another. There is an Atos thrown out, but no blood being well, no fight starting out just yet. And, yeah, uh, another team is especially willing to give up Roche at this stage, so I think that's the primary driving force for both teams being kind of near this top rune area. But I don't really know who is going to make the first move towards Radiant it. I would say that both fortified. both teams take it, you know. Roughly the same pace, Radiant's I would say, uh, assuming that all five heroes are, or rather all ten heroes are around. Well, 27 minutes into this Radiant's game, the first game of a best of seven, attack. don't forget, so still a lot to come on um, for these two teams, a lot of Dota to be played. As uh, Roche, well, they're gonna throw down the snakes, and IP want to go for it here. Well, Empire react to this one. I think they kind of have to right now, but yeah, they they saw it happening. They've they've got the ward down, I believe. So yeah, but over. Radiant also have a ward in their own jungle, so they see that this movement is happening. They're not really positioning for it though. They're just trying to take Roche as quickly as possible. Yeah, that does seem to be the plan. I mean, Fado's outside of the pit, same as Saxa as well. 
Empire. Radiance, so maybe initiate on this one. In we go. We'll find the Winter's Curse onto Ace here, but only 33 is inside the pit with him. But Wukong's being used. BKB pop from Kodos as well, trying to blow up 33. Will be successful. No Doom coming out, but buys back and coming back into this fight. Meanwhile, Sayu in some troll, but he's going to get himself away. Meanwhile, Kodos will just interrupt the life drain as PPD brought down in the back by Dream. Dream still looking to go in on this fight here, seeing maybe an opening, but it doesn't look like it. I mean, Roche is so low, and uh, Wyvern just goes in to make sure, and Dream's actually jumping into this one. This is now forcing NIP to make the aggressive plays without their captain, without PPD. Maiden might be in some trouble, though. He's going to get Atos up and start chunking away by Ace here, chasing him up onto the high ground, but they're going to be happy with us on side of Empire, because they're taking Roshan. It's getting real, real low. Dream's going to get it and get the Aegis. They lose Black Ark's Angel, but he doesn't really care as the Doom now comes down onto Dream, but he is, of course, the Aegis Carrier. Not going to be too worried about this one, but he will lose his first life. Meanwhile, Maiden once again being chased down by Ace. The yeah, Aegis drops. Ace is just kind of ripping through the backlines of Empire here. Very scary for them to see, but they're actually trying to get out of this one as Dream does respawn, but the dagger's being thrown. Quick. Go Scepter out from Saxon. They're going to keep him okay as the Hex comes out onto Dream, but now cancel off. Meanwhile, they'll just drop down the boundless strike onto Saxon here. Take him out. Ace trying to run himself away, but he's going to die as well. Black Ark's Angel finds him with the Arctic Burn. Now look towards PPD as well. Kodos closing the gap. No chance for this Lich either. NIP threw so much into this fight, and they lose Roshan. They lose the Aegis. And they lose two fights, basically, in a row. Oh dear, Team Empire have found their momentum, and then some. Yeah, and it was all off an initiation by Black Arts Angel. I don't know how he had vision to curse inside the pit. Because he, like, like Lifestealer was basically, as soon as I see Wyvern, I'm just going to not stand next to anyone. But Black Arts Angel managed to get a curse in the pit, and I, I'm guessing some of them was tracked. That was pretty much the only thing I can think of, but that is surprising just, to me. Is it not just for what? flying vision from Arctic Burns? I, I, he, she may have been close enough. That, that's entirely possible. But if that was the case, then... Trying to chase down 33 here. The crit's coming in, but 33 is pretty chunky, especially with PPD backing him up with that frost shield. So, Doom going to be okay for now as NIP start to make Radiant's their way over, but no response is going to come out for them. Also, I'm not entirely... Because you don't get flying vision, you just get bonus night vision. And so you can't see inside the pit. And I don't think Monkey King was standing on a tree, so I, I'm really surprised at how they managed to get vision of that. I may have just missed something, or maybe someone was tracked, but whatever the case, NIP weren't expecting it. And that's why I was surprised that they had that ward in their jungle, they saw everyone rotating, but they didn't do anything with it. They just kind of let Empire get a like a, a real good pincer position they were on both sides of the pit and as a result nip starting to have to come up with some recovery plan because they are down quite a bit in net worth at this stage yeah it's uh it's just it's looking pretty painful for them to be honest and then you look at the heroes and it's i don't know they don't have bad late game but i think i would give empire the slight edge over the late game situations here so um yeah, NIP need to get to the drawing board, need to get there quick, otherwise this game is going to slip out of their hands. This Maiden chasing for 33, he's going to see him TPing, there's a nice shuriken for you, sir. You stay in this lane, as uh, he'll continue kind of just stealing his gold, you know. 36, thank you very much. Another 36. You know he's going to go for it, dude's hungry. He's also got a team coming in as well, so he can also find a kill, but I mean, Maiden's just in it for the money. It's 33 getting chunked down here, and he will be annihilated by the side of Empire. <laughs> Man, and he's dead for 70 seconds, and it's a track kill, so that's like a 1k net worth difference because pretty much four Empire heroes were there for that. Dream comes in, scoops up some creeps under the cover of Blur, and uh, we'll just cut the wave nicely here. Not that he really needs to, but just going in for the farm, basically. Uh, NIP all huddled up in the, uh, in the Radiant Large Jungle right now as... Uh, He's showing himself in the mid lane, but I really don't think NIP want to go for anything here, especially without their doom. And he's actually jumping forwards onto Pugna here. And Fada looking to maybe force out the BKB. It's all he really wants to do here. He's definitely not looking Radiance for a fight, because they will not fight without 33, I can guarantee that. Unless they're forced even, into it. Uh, even for like the next three or four fights, it's going to be difficult for Fada to be, uh, for Fada to be relevant, because even though these were first item BKB pickups, Empire have played around both of them really well. The first BKB on both the Phantom Assassin and Monkey King were used at the first Roche fight and then, or well, Ancient fight, and then this uh, second BKB charge were used at the Roche fight. And so both their BKBs are at eight seconds, which means that it's still gonna be a while before Pugna feels confident jumping into fights and actually trying to make 
this monkey and phantom assassin feel nervous about taking a fight. Well, 33. Now she has Aghanim Scepter, interestingly. So we saw this um, from the last time 33 played Doom as well. Uh, going for this Ags pickup and uh, looking to basically chase people down. Interesting item to get on the hero. We're more used to seeing the kind of uh, auras coming out from Dooms these days, but um, this is going to be what he decides to go for. Yeah, I guess his main goal... I mean, if he breaks Phantom Assassin with this Aghanim Scepter Doom, then he doesn't even really need to worry about her. All you need to do is just cast the Doom. She's not going to be critting. She's not going to be evading. And you can just worry about the Monkey King instead. That is going to be the plan from them. Dyer's top Game's on shrine is under, attack. is under attack. There's a little bit of IP making some uh, aggressive movements. Actually, gonna go and hit this shrine here, which uh, Empire are not responding to right now, and a line is drawn. Um, who did draw that line? Such as Bounty Hunter who drew that spawned. line. Well, Aegis is timed out now, so as much of an advantage as Empire have, they don't have that really good way to get past the Doom, because I think uh, with the Aegis being instantly claimed, like, the next Roach fight's gonna be very important, because then Doom needs to decide, do I spend this Doom on PA's first life or her second life? And if she's able to play around that, then... I think Empire's Monkey King is able to get a lot done on the first half of the fight. Uh oh, Peter. Dream. Invis up, looking for some action here, jumping forwards, and PPD is just annihilated here. No chance of that lich at all, is there? And comes the Atos on to Dream here, but now he just jumps in, immediate BKB, but gets doomed up as well, trying to blow up 33. I mean, they need to kill him, otherwise this doom is just going to be constantly reflect, refreshed. Trying to run himself away here, but they need to bring him down. They can't quite find him, so they'll turn their attention to Saxer instead. Meanwhile, Dream being chased down by Ace, but there's going to be a save from Black Ark's Andrew, who's just sitting up on this cliff, having a great old time. Ace is going to try and uh, kind of say hello, but can't get up there to join him. Meanwhile, Saxer gets dropped by Kodos in the back lines. Black Ark's Angel still kind of toying around with the idea of fighting this. They're not that scared. Dream, his doom has now run off, so they can actually go into this one. 33, tried to get a creep, but his Zed just dies as Kodos jumps off of him and gets that kill. And now they look towards Zayu as well. Sorry, you're looking towards the Pugna as well. So, uh, Sai does actually escape the Pugna's grasp with a uh, nice little cold embrace there. The rest of the team coming in from behind. And uh, look at those odds drop for Empire as they take another good fight here. Just playing the fights really well. I mean, chasing off the Doom and then making sure they can uh, heal up on all their respective heroes. It's uh, very nice for them as they go up onto this high ground here and start chipping away at this tier 3. Uh, Dream has to back himself away here, but that's okay. Phantom Assassin being able to get her BKB off before that Doom connected was critical because then there was nothing to really keep her around in the fight. If you were able to like hex her, then you could probably kill her off before, you know, Doom gets chased away. But her being able to BKB mean that Shaman couldn't do anything, so he had to back off. And Doom was taking the full brunt of all of Empire's focus because the rest of NIP weren't in, really in the area. Like Lich already got executed by the dagger and one blank combination and ace doesn't really have any good vehicles to jump into so he's not constantly sitting in someone like we oftentimes see with a life stealer at this stage of the game so i mean as a result ace is being able to farm more but he's still falling significantly behind after all these team fights he, the monkey and the phantom assassin at least the phantom assassin specifically is just a mile ahead of life stealer in terms of net worth yeah, as you say, it's, it kind of makes me think it's kind of surprising that we didn't see this Doom go for a Blink Dagger or something to try and give the Life Stealer somebody to get inside of a vehicle to arrive to these fights in style. Um, instead, just does, yeah, goes to the Vlads and goes to the, uh, the Aghanim Scepter instead. Very interesting. Yeah, and Pugna, even though Pugna has a Blink Dagger, Fada does not want to get close enough to any fight that a Life Stealer would want to use a Pugna to get in, so... It is a little bit of a tricky situation because I, I I suppose if you do go for... So if you went for Doom Blink, then 
I don't know. I guess I guess he wouldn't go for this ghost supper. He's got a blink queued up now on 33. But right now 33's items are the Midas, the Vlads, the Ghost Scepter, and the Aghanim Scepter. So I don't really have any issues with that, especially given the way that the first, you know, 20 minutes of this game went. But now we're definitely seeing the shortcomings of not giving a life stealer an easy avenue into fights. Definitely, uh, so just one less thing as well for Empire to think Radiance about. Feeling very, very comfortable in this game so far, uh, with their two big right clickers sitting pretty comfortably. Uh, as the BKB timers get lower, though, it, it might actually give um, NIP another timing to look forward to, though. Meanwhile, there's a bit of a fight breaking out as uh, they've got the shackles onto Sayu here. And now this is to Gaze as well. Sayu trying to force up himself away, but not going to escape. Winter's Curse going to hold Ace still, though. Going to throw down the Wukongs once again. The combo comes out once again. They're looking for Ace, trying to blow him up. The crap file help him out for a bit. They're actually tossing Sasa back into the Wukongs as well. Two targets for Kodos to eat into here. Continuing to try and find Ace and run him down here. Kodos gives chase. Meanwhile, well, Dream is doomed up, so he's just going to have to sit back for a little bit and wait for this one to run off. But once again, um, not a big deal that this Doom has come to order. Actually, probably a good thing for Empire because Doom is now on cooldown and they've got two buybacks out of this. And now they're just looking for Oshan. Can an IP really try and fight this one? They have to, but it's it's going to be a fool's errand. Without Doom, there's no answer to this Phantom Assassin. Unless they take advantage of her BKB being down. Yep, 33 just running straight in. Hex out onto Dream as well. And look at her health disappear. She's half health already. Trying to jump out of the pit and go onto Fada and Jake took through some backlands. She proven very effective. Meanwhile, on the front end of the fight, Ace looking for some targets here. Trying to blow up the wipe and will be successful. Stream has finished off BPD and Saxa as well. Both supports dropped. Uh, buyback comes out from the Wyvern as he is finally finished off by Ace here. Just coming straight back into this. While Minol Kodos close the gap on Doom. Gets 33. Now Ace surrounded by Empire Heroes. Track is outside. You're closing the gap. He's going to have the toss forwards. Nice little blink from Pugna though. And uh, I don't think Dream quite made contact with Pugna there. Kind of weird toss there to land halfway in between the blink location and destination it looked like. But all the same. Empire take a fantastic fight. Three heroes down. Two buybacks used. So double that actually as uh, they now look on towards the Roche Pit as well. And there will be no response for NIP about this. They are looking on their last legs NIP. So they just can't seem to find a fight this game. They had to take that fight, and again, if they had some follow-up after in the initiation, like if the Lifesteader was able to hit the Phantom Assassin while she was hexed, then it's possible they would have been able to win the fight, but I don't know. I, it's, it's, really, it's really difficult for Ace this game. I feel for him. And now Dream is gonna bottle up a double damage rune. Yeah, yeah, that is a double damage PA. It's, it's very much a thing, a scary thing. Uh, Fada in some trouble down here as Kodos will give him the boundless strike, but is able to blink away on Fada. But meanwhile, the capsule just comes in for Black Arc Angel immediately there, stopping the TP, holding him in place. Dream coming in with the Abyssal Blade, and that's going to be an easy kill. Ultimate's committed, though. They, they, they did throw down the Winter's Curse that one, which has been a big part of their team fight. Yeah, it's a minute cooldown afterwards. I mean, it's 80 seconds, so you're gonna have next time you siege very easily. So I think the more important thing is uh, still keeping in mind on these BKBs. And Monkey Kings is at seven seconds. Phantom Assassin has actually backpacked hers, so she doesn't even need it until her second life, but I believe it's also seven seconds. And uh, Monkey King also has a Lincoln Sphere now. Not that I think he's getting it for himself, but I think he can put it onto his Phantom Assassin and she can freely siege. So she didn't have to spend the money on it, but she gets the protection. And they do have, you know, ways of popping the Lincoln Sphere, but Dyer's Doom's cast animation is so long, oftentimes you can get the Lincolns onto your ally in time while 33 is going to go through the animation. Right, so Sai just pushing out this wave up in the top lane now. Now picks up a BKB for himself, actually. So, 21 kills to 20. Oh, Saxa found in the trees, getting jumped upon here by the bounty. And in comes Sai as well, offering a ton of damage to blow up Saxa. He just wanted to kind of push the lane out, maybe throw down some snakes whilst their backs were turned on Empire. This is starting to feel a little bit desperate from NIP, though. Yeah, and that's yet another track kill. Tiny gets nearly 500 gold just for killing a 6k net worth Shadow Shaman. Oof, that, that's, and that's uh, with them having like a 20k net worth advantage as well. Yeah, that's painful. Uh, it's painful. DD rune activated by Dream. He really wants someone to show up and defend this 
but there's no re reason for anyone to get that close. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. I'm gonna laugh if this multi shot dagger kills someone. <laughs> I will I will laugh and I will cry at the same time. <laughs> it, it's it's like a it's like a it's like a sad laugh. You'll be like, ha ha middle barracks has fallen. Well, Empire Radiance doing the damage here with this double damage room, which does now run out, but still, they've already taken mid racks going down to bottom as well. NIP I don't really seem to have much response. They're jumping straight into this one, but here's the Wukongs with the extra ring range as well. Doom is out onto Dream, but Fat is the one who's going to die. Just the Wukong to Man here. Meanwhile, 33 being chomped up as well. Kodo's just chasing them all back here. No fear from this Monkey King whatsoever as he sits inside his Wukongs comfortably. Will now run out. Dream still got the Doom ticking away, but Doom can't really close down the gap, so it's going to run off quite short. Surely is in. Well, Black Ox Angel kind of left behind here actually. They, yeah, they will go at least get the kill, but you know, Black Ox Angel will be happy to sacrifice them to be honest. And now they can look towards Ace and 33 as well. 33 getting so very low. Nullifier out onto him as well. One more hit. Kodos gets the kill. Dream jumping forwards, looking for Ace. Abyssal comes out onto him. They're trying to heal him up, trying to do anything they can, but he's just not going to stay alive. Does buy back into this fight, but the Doom is down. The Lich is down. And now they'll look straight back towards. Well, they have Dream locked down for a bit, but Ace just cannot do the damage in. Time and in comes a boundless strike. They're in the fountain. They're tearing NIP apart. The final stand for Ace inside his own base. Dream will fight it up. He's gonna die once, but of course he's got the Aegis. Man's gonna die to the fountain as well. All right, uh, Empire, cool, cool it, cool it. There we go. There we go. Ooh. Bounty Hunter got really excited. His big sister was evading everything and tanking satanic damage, and then Bounty was like, "I want to do it too." Oh man, Empire though. Kind of a little bit on the edge there, maybe uh, visiting Fro Town, but it's okay. They they they, they play sensibly. We will back. Oh, Ace actually caught up by the Abyssal and Kodos here, but it gets inside a creep. And oh, he didn't turn off his radiance though. He's gonna burn the oh, creeps dead. No, Ace he's in a lot of trouble once again. The toss is gonna finish the job. A stick to the face will put an end to Ace. And now they look towards Peter as well as he's just sitting on the high ground, not really knowing what to do with himself. It's just a slaughter inside the radiant base right now. As Empire take kill after kill, everybody seems godlike. GG is called NIP fall apart and lose game number one in this best of seven series. I think you need to respect Seiyu's Tiny. I think Seiyu's Tiny was the, the clutch factor in that game. He managed to toss the Lifestealer into the Winter's Curse, uh, killing off Pugna, which was the real first sign of hope from Empire, which yeah, that was not a good looking game. They lost their 2-3 so early on, but that, that toss worked out. And then later on, I, during that final team fight, the tosses out of like uh, Shadow Shaman would get a shackle, and then Seiyu would just immediately toss whoever got shackled way, way back into the fight. And it was also a good way to make sure that this Phantom Assassin could get out of the AoE of Doom's Aghanim's Doom. And so there was just a lot of answers that Empire had, and it was because they were on Comfort Heroes. So I think, uh, like I said at the beginning of the draft, NIP, I mean, it's a best of seven. They can experiment around, but I think that Seiyu's Tiny is something worth banning and again like you had said the shaman has not really proven to be all that valuable for nip neither in the singularity series and in this series it also didn't seem that valuable as a support yeah yeah i definitely agree on that one for sure is uh i mean have, have you seen the graph i didn't realize but it was a 30k gold advantage which ninja in pajamas managed to throw there i mean that yeah, doesn't feel very good. Will do that. a bit of a pinnacle but yeah i mean that's a bounty effect coming into play just swinging things right back into the court of uh team empire here and a very well executed game though you know they didn't get panicked when nip were so far ahead did they you know they they recognized that okay you know it's a pugna draft it's gonna do this it's gonna round the map killing us we've got a phantom assassin we've got a monkey king you know monkey king just built Midas chilled out, farmed a lot. He wasn't like throwing himself down lanes or anything like that. PA was just focusing on the jungle until she got that BKB and then started fighting. One butched by the start, just as the BKB arrived. But basically, once that BKB was in, there was no chance for NIP. I don't think they want to fight after they got these BKBs up on the side of Team Empire. It was it was messy. Yeah, and I don't even think the BKBs ended up getting down to five seconds, which is good on Empire that they were able to end the game before they started losing that heavy advantage over to Pugna because. I, I don't really think I saw Pugna do anything after those BKBs came out. 
Yeah, yeah, it just it just looked sad. It just looked sad. Um, but still, plenty of time to come back into this series. By no means over yet. Merely the first game out of a possible seven. So that's right, we will continue through with these super finals and the best of seven playoffs in here in the Radiant Tug of War We Play event. My name's Nomad, he's been Tsunami, and we're going to be back after a short break for the next game in this series. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 